This is a five minute presentation about the numerical methods strand of the MEI Further Maths specification for first teaching in 2017. A lot of the time in the A-level maths and further maths course, we present students with problems which they can solve using the techniques we're teaching them. We give them equations to solve, which they know how to solve, functions to integrate, which they can integrate, differential equations to solve, which they can solve. This can give a misleading impression. What about the many equations which can't be solved analytically, or functions which can't be integrated, or differential equations which can't be solved? In this unit, we explore numerical methods for finding approximate answers to problems like this. Because the answer is approximate, we have to consider errors and how to deal with them. Often more accurate answers can be obtained at the expense of a lengthier calculation. Even better is when a sequence of approximations leads us to an analysis of errors, which in turn leads to a more precise answer. It's technology which makes all this possible. And using a spreadsheet in the classroom is at the heart of this unit. Coursework is not permitted by Ofqual in the new A-levels. And there won't be a computer in the exam. So we've come up with questions which assume that students have used the spreadsheet to implement the methods in the course. In the current MEI spec, there's a successful numerical methods unit and we wanted to make sure that the new one looks very similar. There are not many changes. Numerical methods is a minor option, one-sixth of A-level further maths. There is a small amount of numerical methods in the non-AS part of A-level maths. This unit builds on that, but it's easy to teach from scratch if you want to teach it in year 12. There is an AS unit with the same content as the A-level minor option. It's examined at AS standard and it counts for one third of AS further maths. The topics will look familiar to anyone who's taught the course before. The bottom four topics are standard mathematical topics at this level, but using a numerical approach. The work on errors, which pervades the course, raises the course above being a collection of techniques to a serious mathematical study of numerical methods. In future work, students will come across more sophisticated and efficient numerical techniques, but the work on errors they take from this course will underpin them all. Focusing now on what's different from the current course, there's more about the first two bullet points on the next few slides. We have taken the opportunity to, to tidy up the spec a little, to make some things clearer and to offer more examples. This is all following feedback from teachers. One or two exam questions may well have some modelling included. For example, a kinematics context means that we don't have to tell candidates that they need to differentiate. They know how to find velocities given values of the displacement of a particle. We've done this so that students who take a pure heavy range of optional units in further maths will encounter sufficient modelling in their course. This is an excerpt from a question near the end of the paper. An equation is given and candidates show in part one that the secant method fails for a particular pair of initial values. Now they're given a spreadsheet printout of the method applied with different initial values. You can see that they're expected to be able to work out what's going on and to provide a spreadsheet formula for one of the cells. If students have used spreadsheets throughout the course, this will not be too challenging. After part three, candidates are given the same spreadsheet with three more columns where some analysis of convergence has been carried out. They're given some of the spreadsheet formulae which have been used and are asked what the spreadsheet shows about the rate of convergence of the secant method. Again, this is a reasonable expectation for students who have done this sort of thing in the classroom. 
We don't expect knowledge of any particular spreadsheet. The spec is clear about the sorts of formulae candidates should know about. Nor is there any particular way of setting out a spreadsheet that candidates should learn. If they have experience of doing this sort of thing for themselves, they will be fine in the exam. Because there's no coursework to be done, we thought there was space for a small new topic, making use of the time previously spent on writing up coursework. Relaxation is a method for speeding up the convergence of an iterative method. Sometimes it produces a convergent sequence from a divergent one. It's a taster for similar techniques which students might encounter later. The spreadsheet shows an example. The yellow box shows an iterative formula. The shaded column in the spreadsheet shows that this sequence converges slowly. The general relaxation formula is shown in the blue box. It has a parameter, lambda. Sequences for various values of lambda are shown in the spreadsheet. They all converge faster than the original sequence, with some faster than others. Lots to explore here. The formula for relaxation will always be given in the exam. This is how the exams work. There's one A-level paper and one AS paper on the same content. They can be co-taught in Year 12. MEI wants to support you in teaching this course, especially where things have changed. Some of the new MEI textbooks and ebooks have already been published and the rest are on their way. The highly regarded integral online resources are being updated and in some cases rewritten with interactive walkthroughs. There's a whole range of face-to-face -face CPD and online webinars as well as some one-day conferences devoted to further maths. Finally, you can register for the MEI Staff Room, an online place for finding free extra resources, expert help from MEI, and support from other teachers teaching the MEI spec. Do get in touch if you have any questions. We'd be delighted to help.